Uh, Christian is a <laughs> security consultant, ethical hacker, and trainer with uh, 10 ICT. He's previously spoken at Black Hat EU, IT Underground, and Swiss Cyberstorm. So, Christian? Thank you. Well, thank you. I even talked and I already got the applause. <laughs> So welcome everybody to this talk about virtual forensics. Uh, I did this talk as well at uh, Black Hat uh, EU in uh, Barcelona this year, but uh, there's some new stuff in it. So I updated some slides and some new investigations uh, results. So I hope it will be interesting for you. So this is the agenda for today. Uh, who am I? I will shortly introduce myself a little bit more. Uh, then we will discuss about traditional VS virtual forensics, the challenges we face in real time, uh, Mr. mentioning about uh, Citrix and uh, VMware, Windows 7, and a summary, and uh, I will give some opportunity for questions. So. so, you might have noticed, but I'm from the Netherlands. So yesterday I traveled about 24 hours to get here, so I have a little bit of jet lag. We have the greatest soccer fans in the world. I asked her to join me, but she refused. And I warn you, <laughs> If you have any comments on my talk, we know how to kick. So this is where I started. Um, when I was 12, the Commodore 64 and Amiga. Then I joined the Silicon Graphics. And well, that's why I started and got the virus about computers and forensics and hacking. So then we have uh, a duty in the Netherlands. So I joined uh, the Navy for a couple of years. Uh, on the right side, uh, I joined the boarding team as well. I fight uh, against uh, drugs in the Caribbean uh, area. So, uh, yeah, it's quite fun. And then I was at a point, what should I do? I've been studying uh, theology as well. And I was, should, yeah, I was interested in computers and security. And uh, so I decided uh, to go for the security job. Uh, and meanwhile, in my free time, uh, my wife and I take care for uh, homeless people and uh, foster children, so that's a little bit what, what we do. And this is my biggest hobby. I like to play with uh, synthesizers. All, really the old ones, but they're quite expensive, so so now I'm using the, the digital ones, but I hope one of the time to have some uh, real ARPs and that kind of stuff. And Moog, if you know what I'm talking about. So this session is not about a negative talk about virtualization. Uh, recent results show that about 60% of the Dutch companies have already virtualization in their company. Uh, mostly uh, VMware, ESX, uh, Citrix. So, yeah, we have to face it. It's real and we are facing it during investigations as well. So, we have to learn about it. I'm not sponsored by any of the vendors, especially uh, Microsoft. Uh, I have to uh, give my talk to them before I would speak about it because they were very afraid that I would uh, and close some, or disclose some things. Uh, and actually I do one, but they agreed I, I, can, I could mention it. So. And I'm not talking about using a virtual machine as a forensic research uh, platform. I see a lot of uh, malware an analysts, uh, they are using um, VMware Workstation to build a Windows XP environment uh, to test their malware, for example. But that, that's this talk not about. Okay, this is yes, this is no. All right. Traditional VS virtual forensics. In a traditional way, uh, forensic researchers were used to go to a company, uh, acquire a computer, a laptop, get the disk out, make a nice copy of it, write, write, write protection, and well, that's it. You know exactly where the data is or you have it physically in your hand. And the problem nowadays is if that companies have large, large storage areas, uh, storage networks, uh, virtual environments, uh, VDIs, and yeah, you're facing problems. Have you ever been to this? If you're going to an acquiry of data and you walk into that company and you see a lot of, well, storage areas like this and you're just wondering, okay, which disk do I need to have or otherwise, where's my data? So what are the challenges, I think, I believe? is what to expect if you're at a site if your kit with you, with all this stuff, uh, the right uh, protection devices, uh, your laptops, uh, all kind of data stuff, what to face if you have a really large uh, VMware farm, for example? Uh, which tools can you use? Because what's very important is for forensic research is that the tools you use, you can prove what you have done. 
that your audit trail, your forensic process is real and you can uh, explain what you've done to the judge. But not all tools which you use normally in, uh, I say, normal digital forensics, you can use in virtual forensics. Uh, an example for is uh, NCase. If you are doing a VMDK uh, research, well, NCase will show some results, but it doesn't work because uh, the, the, the code, the source code of VMDK file format is closed. And I talked to the guys uh, from Guidance uh, this morning as well, from what are you doing about it? And they said, well, yeah, we have problems with uh, the guys from VMware that they di didn't want to disclose their code. So you have to work around. I will show you later on and, and tell you later on what kind of techniques I use there for. Um, where is the data? Where is it hosted? Who owns the data? Very important. Uh, for example, the Dutch law is uh, you need to own the data and you need to own the machines before we can acquire, acquire the data. So that's, I don't know how it is in the US, but for us, is that the law? Uh, which forensic techniques can you use? Can we use traditional forensic techniques? Or can you also use uh, new th things like uh, carving, data carving, or memory forensics on uh, virtual forensics? So, and what about jurisdiction? I will give you some examples. So what must be acquired? I don't know if you just recognize this, but I have had a case once when we were there at a location. It was a huge farm of data, and the local uh, Department of Justice uh, representative said, well, I want everything to be taken away. I'm mean, just like, oh my god. But it's VMware. I don't care. I want to see disks. So we ended up with a truckload of computers and servers. And well, actually, the, the, that company uh, well, couldn't work for a month. So you can. Yeah, you can imagine how the impact is for the business. So, and where is my data? This is a statement of uh, Microsoft, the director of the Netherlands, um, studying about Azure. Yeah, you know the now new virtualization platform of Microsoft that, uh, although you ask, I want only the data to be stored in my own country, for example, in the Netherlands, actually they make one copy for the Netherlands, one copy is going to Ireland, and another copy of the data is in India or maybe in the US. So, yeah, that's really a problem. I think we should really focus on that one as well. So where is my evidence? One of the latest developments of uh, Joanna Rutkowska, and I don't know if you know her, she's very good about uh, virtualizations. Uh, she wrote about the blue pill, red pill, about hypervisor security. And actually she's developing now uh, uh, with some other research, uh, I forgot the name, but uh, a new uh, Cubes OS. It's a virtualization platform, and actually what you see in that OS, you have for every uh, function, for example, uh, an, an office uh, function, you have an, your own virtual machine. So if you're processing a Word or file or an Excel, you got an office VM. Uh, for example, if you're going for internet, you have an internet VM. So. It's a very safe way. They try to uh, make a kind of sandbox technique to protect your computer. But what if you want to uh, gather evidence, for example? So that's really be going to be a problem. <coughs> Portable VMs. I don't know if anyone has ever worked with these ones or seen these ones. Just your USB stick and your VM is on it. Now every data is in that VM. If it's, if it's uh, written or file protected, you can't open it. You can't get any data out of it. So you have a really a problem. So you really have to understand how these techniques work and what, what is the latest technique and what can we face. VDIs, the latest trend we see in the Netherlands. Uh, desktops out of the wallet and desktop hosted in the cloud. But if you, if you have an incident, okay, who owns the data? the cloud company and which uh, OS or which VM do you need I don't know that's really difficult that's really what we need to understand and that's why I, I'm very pleased to give this talk it's not only to, sh to show uh, what I'm researching at but also for the community to give a shout and to call for please help and together we can uh, focus this problem and work on it what about jurisdiction that is an example. Someone was uh, gathering child porn, using different cloud resources. 
to put on this data. You have several jurisdictional precincts. So how do you get the evidence? Do you know your limits? Who you're going to contact? <laughs> so what we really need is to understand the technology. I really need to understand uh, the implementations of the products, how it's implemented, and where you can find the data, which is valuable for your research. Uh, which files are interesting? Which tools can we use? And, uh, well, how those tools are acting in the virtual environment. And really, can you explain the working of your tool in, in the court? And once I was in the court, it was really great. I was uh, doing a contra, contra research. And um, one of the experts was asked, can you explain about uh, MD5 sum? And the guy went up to the board and just wrote down the com complete mathematical formula. And the judge was just like, OK, I, I believe you're, you understand the, the material. But how many of the forensic researchers you face in court are just the tool guys? They know how the tool works. But the deeper levels of uh, OS or the file system, they can't explain to you. And if you can't explain about file systems, how do you think you can explain about virtual forensics, about virtual file systems? And we need to develop an approach. Uh, I don't know if the, if the people are here, but recently uh, Singress has released a book about uh, re forensic research in the cloud environment or virtual environment. And I've read the book, and it's a nice overview, but it didn't give the hands for how to research. If you're in law enforcement, what we need, what we do face, it doesn't tell you about it. So it was a good initiative. But I think it has to go further. It must go further. So which decisions? Well, in the past, we always pulled the plug from a machine. Just pull out the plug, get out the disk, copy it, take it to your lab, research it. But I think if you're now visiting a company and you're doing a pull the plug of a VMware server, I don't think you're going to be happy. And in the meantime, there are a lot of uh, live forensics techniques which have developed. Uh, for example, memory forensics, file carving. There, there's so much for, uh, available data in the live environment, which processes are running in memory. But how are you getting those out of the virtual memory? So the next uh, part of my uh, demo and presentation will be about uh, Citrix, VMware, and Windows 7. Yeah, which files are interesting for use, which tools can you use for it, and what are the hiccups, and well, what, would be, what we need for the future. So Citrix, well, I think everyone knows Citrix. And there are many ways to implement it. But I know in, in a couple of years ago when someone told me, you have to do an investigation, and that company has a Citrix environment, I would just like go for, oh no. Because I knew, oh, only the system profile, the registry, uh, maybe some log files, that's it. I couldn't copy a disk or something like that. So you really have to imagine, if you have a suspect, for example, in this case, a suspect has a mobile phone nowadays. <laughs> it was, it, was it a Dutch kick? <laughs> <laughs> a laptop, the internet, of course, the firewall with the logs. So you really have to um, understand how the suspect connects to the network, for example. And then you can get a more and more logs. You have, you have then the Citrix profile, but you can have the, um, the internet logs from your firewall, what time this it connects. The Citrix access gateway with its logging, RSA, the Citrix farm, the desktop. And actually, if someone is using a thin client, for example, to connect to a Citrix environment, I always make a copy of the, of the thin client as well, just to be sure. You can better be sure to copy more data, then you have to go back. Often you don't have that chance. So what, what are the interesting files for Citrix? The last logon file, for example. That's a data I can client. Configuration log. By default, it's not enabled. Of course, the user profile. I think the enter user dot, well, it's the most valuable file you ever have. And although the latest Internet Explorer and um, the Google browsers make it difficult for us, there are still tools and still ways to get data out of it. Citrix access, access gateway logs uh, is 